Hey guys, it's Kasera, and today I'm gonna to be doing my April TBR. March, I did a really really good job of actually following my TBR I obviously didn't get to all of the books on my TBR because I put 32 books on my March TBR like I knew I wasn't gonna get to all of the books on my March TBR did end up reading more than 32 books mind you I just didn't get to the ones that I put on the TBR I'm really bad at following TBRs but I did get to about half of the books that I actually put on my March TBR I'm hoping that if I do the kind of same thing for April as I did in March that I'll end up getting to most of the books on my TBR so I have my goals that I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes. I have the books that I'm going to do read-alongs for, for the BookTube SFF Awards, and then I have all the books that I'm just really, really excited to get to really soon. So I'll be talking about all of that in a moment. But first of all, what my goals are, so you guys know. So I have goals to read at least eight physical books a month, which shouldn't be a problem. I have plenty of physical books that I really, really want to get to, so that's not going to be a problem. I have six other goals though. So one of them is a new goal, so I want to talk about that a little bit. I'm adding the goal of rereading one book per month. Not on audio because I automatically do that as I'm going to sleep. I listen to an audiobook of a, one of my favorites as I'm going to sleep for only half an hour a night. So I end up rereading those anyway. I want to do one reread of a different book every month. And the reason why I want to do this is because I found that if I know I will reread a book later or there's a good chance I'll end up rereading a book later, I'm a lot more likely to pick it up now. Even if it's a book that I know I'll love, especially if it's a book that I know I'll love. This is clear to me especially with the Expanse series and with the Realm of the Elderlings. I have been like kind of putting off some of those books even though they're like more books in the series because I know that I'm gonna love them. I know I'm gonna love them and I wanted to like prolong the experience of reading them but I recently finished Caliban's War and the only reason I finished that book is because I know that there's a good chance later on in the future like next year or whatever I'll end up coming back to the book and rereading it because I gave myself this goal of rereading at least one book a month rather than just reading new books because I have been a lot reading a lot of new books but in the month of March I actually reread like eight books like something crazy like that and I really loved that I really liked rereading books I used to only reread books for a while because I couldn't find anything new that I wanted to read now there's so many books that I really want to read that are new that I don't get around to rereading books so long explanation for the goal but that's gonna be my sixth goal is to do one physical reread per month in addition to that I have goals of reading one classic one sci-fi one mystery slash thriller novel one history historical fiction novel and one book that's over 700 pages. Last month it was 800 pages. I bumped that down to 700 pages because it's really hard to find books that are over 800 pages. There are not that many of them and the point of that prompt was to read more adult high fantasy because most of those books have very high page count but I found that a lot of them are not even reaching that 800 page count though I can find a good amount that are over 700 pages. So I'm still gonna look for books like over the 800 page count and try and put those on my TBRs but the actual goal will be over 700 pages. I'm going to start with those goals and what I plan to read for those goals. So for my classic this month, I'm going to be reading Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I am really excited for this one. So last month I ended up finishing Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and I ended up really, really loving it, which is why I decided to read Jane Eyre. Not just because I have matching covers for the two, but because they're similar in style in the sense that a lot of people who don't read classics end up really loving Jane Eyre. And I've never read Jane Eyre. I started it as a child when I when I was really really little like before I even got into reading in general and I ended up DNFing it because I was bored but I feel like I will like it now and a lot of people really like the main character of Jane Eyre so I want to see what this book is about I want to see what all the hype is about and I'm excited to get to this one for my sci-fi book this month I'm going to be reading Abaddon's Gate by James S.A. Corey yes this was on my March TBR as a sci-fi book no I did not end up reading it in March I ended up reading the second book in the Expanse series which is Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey this is the third book in the Expanse Expanse series and I'm really really excited to get to this one. I just finished Caliban's War and I absolutely loved it. It was so good. I read it like I started it a month ago but most of it I read over the course of like a day and a half and it was really good. I really really loved it and it left me really really wanting more of this series like and I'm really really excited to get to this one now. So I had planned to read this one kind of like at the end of April but I might end up picking this one up earlier because I like really really want to read it now. So so yeah. I'm really, really excited for this one. For my mystery or thriller novel, I'm gonna be reading And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I'm actually really excited for this one also because I've been wanting to read 
this for a really long time. I got the ebook for this one like a long, long time ago and just never got to it. So I feel like having the physical book, I'm more likely to get to it. Agatha Christie is an author that I've really wanted to try and this is like probably her most famous book that I've heard of. So I'm excited to get to it and hopefully I'll end up liking it. For historical fiction, I'm planning on reading Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. I have the audiobook for this one from my library. I actually started it a couple of days ago because I like couldn't wait. I needed another audiobook at the time. It's really interesting so far. It's about orphans and I think it might have to do with illegally obtaining orphans, like illegally adopting them or something like that. So basically human trafficking. I'm not sure exactly, but it takes place in the 1960s and 19, I want to say early 1990s in the United States, which is just an interesting setting and I'm excited to see where it goes. I've heard a lot of good things about this book. It's like one of the top rated books on Goodreads that I've seen and I'm really, really excited to get to it. So for my 700 plus page book, I have a lot of options for this one because there are a lot of books that fit that category that I want to read in the month of April. But I decided to go with this one, one, because it's also over 800 pages and two, because I really, really bought this one on a whim. Like it was a complete whim that I bought this book, mostly because I really love the cover and there's a lot of hype around this book right now. But I had it on hold on the library and I could have just read it on hold at the library. You guys know I have a little bit of a book buying problem and I'm putting myself on a book buying ban, like mostly because of this book, but because of a lot of other books that I bought around the same time. I'll be going more into detail with that when I come out with like my next book haul, which is like book haul for March part two, because I got them all in March and not April, even though I should have waited to April to start getting books again. But let's not get into that. The book that I'm talking about is The Priority of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This book is so hyped right now because it was just released. So I believe this is a standalone high fantasy. It has dragons in it, obviously, because dragons. I've been really excited for this book ever since I heard it announced that it was coming out, but I hadn't planned on actually buying it for several reasons. One, because I don't like hardcover books. I especially don't like reading hardcover adult high fantasy books. I've actually been pretty vocal about that on my channel. I prefer mass market paperbacks. So usually when books like this come out, I wait till they're in mass market paperback form before I buy it, but I couldn't help myself. One, because it's such a pretty cover such a pretty cover and two because I really want to read it and I didn't want to wait the six weeks to get it from my library. I am going to have to read this book this month because if I don't, don't read it this month there was no reason for me to buy it. So yes I'm super excited for it because it has dragons, it has political intrigue, it has queens, it's a standalone high fantasy. I'm in the middle of so many series right now like it's not even funny how many series I'm in the middle of right now so I kind of really want a good standalone high fantasy. I'm excited for this one. I'm also kind of scared of it because it's huge. It is ginormous. As you know, I don't like reading hardcovers for high fantasy books because they're so big. So I got it. So now I have to read it. And for my reread this month, I'm going to be reading Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. This is the book that I recently found under my bed at my parents' house. I had been missing this book for a really long time. I want to get back into the series. This is the first novel in the Dragon Riders of Pern series, which is a series that is set on a planet, not Earth, but another planet in which this red dust falls from the skies and the red dust kind of burns the humans, all the vegetation around. So the planet is uninhabitable when this red dust is falling but the humans ally with the dragons who can destroy the red dust basically is the whole point of the series and I don't remember that much about it but there's a lot of cool things with dragons and like teleportation comes into play it's a really cool like twist on sci-fi and fantasy putting it together and I just want to reread the first three novels so that I can get to some of the other stories in the series because there are a lot of them there are tons and tons of stories set in this world that Anne McCaffrey has created created and I'm really excited to get to them so I need to reread the first three so that I can understand the world better so that I can get to the other ones. The next books I want to talk about are my library books that I plan to read in the month of April. These are all audiobooks because I don't have a library near enough to me that I can go to it regularly so when I go to the library I tend to get a lot of books and renew them like three or four times when I have like physical books but I don't plan on going to the library anytime soon so most of the library books I get are through the Libby app and I prefer getting audiobooks to ebooks so I I have four audiobooks from the library that I definitely plan on getting to in the month of April. I will definitely be getting to more than just these four audiobooks because I listen to about four audiobooks a week, but this is just four audiobooks for the month of April. So I'll definitely be getting to more than these four, but these are four that I really, really want to get to in the month of April. The first one is Homefront by Kristen Hanna. I don't know anything about this book. I don't know anything about this book other than the fact that it's written by Kristen Hanna and my library actually has a copy of the audiobook. They only have a copy of like four of Kristen Hanna's audiobooks. This is one of them. I want to read it because Kristen Hanna is one of my new favorite authors. I love the way she writes characters. I love the way she writes character relationships and I'm excited to read more of her books. So 
I'm definitely excited to get to this one. The next book that I'm really, really excited to get to is Internment by Samir Ahmed. So this is actually a recent release. I just got the audiobook from the library too, so I'll be getting to this one pretty soon. And it's about like the near future United States where Muslim Americans are put into internment camps, not unlike the Japanese American internment camps in World War II. I just think the idea of this book is really, really interesting and I wanna see how realistically it's portrayed. And I think this book could be really powerful if it's really well done. So I'm hoping it's really well done. I'm hoping to really like it because it's just a really, really interesting premise and I wanna see how it goes. The next one is My Sister the Serial Killer by Owen Kath Breakwith. I think that's how you pronounce her name. It's literally a thriller novel about someone whose sister is a serial killer. I don't know that much about it other than that, but it's such an interesting premise that I'm excited to get to it. And I have the audiobook on hold at my library and I should be getting it in a few weeks or so. So I should be able to get it in the month of April. And the last one is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagin. And this is another one of those like really, really hyped YA fantasies that I'm like skeptical about, but I feel a lot better about them because of this past week, which if you watch my reading vlog, you'll find out why. I'm open-minded to it now more than I was before. So I'm definitely excited to get to this one and hopefully I'll end up liking it. So next I wanna talk about the books that I'm gonna be reading as a read-alongs for the BookTube SFF Awards. The first one I'm honestly not that excited for. I'm actually dreading just a little bit, but I've already read the other two books in this category. So it's the last book in this category that I have to read to like be an informed voter when I vote for the BookTube SFF Awards. And that is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I'm not the biggest fan of Victoria Schwab. I've only read three of her books, mind you. And I do plan on reading some of her other books, hoping that I'll like them more. And the three books that I read by her, by the way, are Vicious, Vengeful, and A Darker Shade of Magic. And I liked Vicious and Vengeful a lot more than A Darker Shade of Magic. I don't know about City of Ghosts. I, I really don't know. A lot of people who I know who like Victoria Schwab don't like City of Ghosts, but I do really like Middle Grade. So there's a good chance that I might still like City of Ghosts. So I'm trying to keep an open mind to it. I'm gonna get the audiobook from this one from my library and I'm gonna listen to the audiobook because I listened to the audiobook for Vengeful and I really liked her writing in Vengeful and I think it's because of the audiobook form. So I think her writing in general does better on audio than on the physical page, at least for me. So I'm gonna try the audiobook for City of Ghosts and hopefully I'll end up liking it. The next book that I'm planning to read for the BookTube SFF Awards is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I'm hesitant about this one. And it's gonna be somewhat surprising, but I'm hesitant because it's Brandon Sanderson. Mind you, Brandon Sanderson is one of my favorite authors. He's one of my favorite authors for adult high fantasy. I love his adult high fantasy. The Mistborn trilogy is one of my favorite series ever. I loved Elantris, I loved Warbreaker, I love The Emperor's Soul. I'm really excited to finally get into the Stormlight Archives, which I plan to read this year. But I also read Steelheart, and that's where my love for Brandon Sanderson dies. I did not love Steelheart. I actually really, really hated Steelheart. And the reason why I'm hesitant about Skyward is because of Steelheart. Steelheart was YA sci-fi that Brandon Sanderson wrote. The only YA sci-fi that I've read by Brandon Sanderson. This is YA sci-fi by Brandon Sanderson, which is what makes me hesitant about it because I didn't like his previous YA sci-fi. But so many people have had some really good reviews on this book. A lot of people who've never read Brandon Sanderson, mind you, so maybe they don't have as high expectations for him as I do. But a lot of people who have read his books before have also really liked it. So I'm hesitant, but I'm not too hesitant because I mean, I bought the hardcover for this one so obviously I want to read it but I'm hesitant about it I'm hoping that I'll end up liking it I'm hoping 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 praying really that I'll end up liking it because I really really want to like it but I'm hesitant because I've been burned before the next book that I'm gonna be reading for the book to best of awards is the one that I'm the most excited for and that is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett I actually just got the audiobook for this one off of hold for my library I listened to about 15 minutes of the audiobook before I went I need a physical copy of this book like I need a physical copy of this book. That's all it took. 15 minutes of the audiobook and I knew I wanted this book. So yeah, I bought the hardcover of a high fantasy, even though I don't like reading hardcover high fantasy. Now you guys know why I'm going on a book buying ban, but I'm so excited for this one. Like so, so excited for this one. There's nothing wrong with the audiobook, by the way. I liked the audiobook. I just really wanted to read it in physical form because I like reading high fantasy in physical form. That's my preferred method for reading high fantasy. The little bit that I got from the audiobook, I'm pretty sure I really like the main character. I'm, I think I'm gonna really like the main character and I'm interested in the magic system. I don't know what it is yet. Mind you, only listened to 15 minutes of the audiobook. I, so I don't know what the, ma the magic system is yet, but from like the hints that I got 
from that first 15 minutes, I think it's going to be a magic system that I'm really, really interested in. Other than that, I don't know anything about this book. I try not to know too much about books before I go into them, but I'm really excited for this one. So this might be one of the first ones that I pick up in the month of April because I am so, so excited for it. So now for the rest of the books that I'm really hoping to get to in the month of April. So all these books are books that I own and that I'm really, really excited to read and I'm hoping to get to in the month of April. I'm so, so excited for these. Most of them, I just realized, actually all of them, all of them have some aspect of fantasy to them, which is interesting. I didn't expect that. Usually I have at least one book that is like purely contemporary or something like that, but all of these have one fantastical aspect to them and not sci-fi, but actually fantasy, which is interesting. Usually I have like some sort of other type of book in there, but I'm just in this fantasy mood and I'm like in the middle of a fantasy high right now. So I'm just going to continue on with that train and I just hope it continues. The first of these books that I'm really hoping to get to is Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is the first book in the Molasin Book of the Fallen series and the Molasin Book of the Fallen series to me, the most intimidating adult high fantasy series that has ever been published. And I'm finally going to start it. I tried starting the series back in 20, I want to say 13, which is a long time ago. I know that's a long time ago and I haven't gotten to it because back then I realized I was not ready for it. That was like right after I had finished A Song of Ice and Fire and I was not ready for this series, mind you. Song of Ice and Fire is huge, by the way, and it's hard to read, but I still wasn't ready for this series yet. This series is like maybe twice the size of Song of Ice and Fire. There are so many characters and plot lines and places in this series that it's really hard to follow along with, but I think I'm finally to the point in my reading ability that I can follow along with this one and really end up enjoying it. So I'm excited to get into this one. This is also for a read-along for, I don't know, remember what it is, but there's an Instagram read-along for this series starting in April with Gardens of the Moon. So I'm excited to start it. And I will probably try and vlog this series the way I've been vlogging The Realm of the Elderlings. So yes, I'm excited for it. I'm hoping that I'm gonna end up liking the series. The first book is not that bad. It's only 600 pages, but the rest of them are really intimidating. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I end up liking the series. The next one that I'm really, really excited to get to is The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I started reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy in January of last year. I started with The Hobbit. So like I'm three books into it now. And I'm really, really excited to get to this third one, mostly because I like found like actually unabridged audiobook versions of these. And before I found the audiobooks, I was really struggling with the writing, mostly the dialogue. Mostly I just really did not like the dialogue. But when you have a voice actor interpreting the dialogue for you, it's actually really good. I think the audiobooks for this one are really well done. And I'm excited to get to this one because I ended up really loving the two towers because of the audiobooks. So I'm hoping that I'll also end up really loving The Return of the King. Actually, I'm pretty sure that I'll end up loving Return of the King because I've seen the movies. I like the movies. So if I like the movies, there's a good chance that I'll end up liking the book. Oh, I'm definitely, definitely excited to get to this one. So the next book that I'm really, really excited to get to is Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb, possibly also Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. So this is the third book. This is the second book in the Farseer trilogy. I'm hoping to get to this one over the course of the next few days because I have the audiobook for it. So I like to go between the audiobook and the physical book for the Farseer trilogy is what my plan was. I have like three days in the month of March where I'm hoping to read this one and then read this one in the month of April. If I don't finish this one in March though, I will also be reading it in April. I really want to get to the Tiny Man trilogy, which is the next trilogy in the realm of the Elven Things that I have to get to. So I'll be getting to that one in May, but to get to that one, I have to finish the Farseer your trilogy first. I recently reread Assassin's Apprentice on audio and I really really like the audiobook for it so I've decided to read these ones on audio slash also read the physical version like I'll go between the two because I like going between the two. So that's what I plan to do for the rest of the Farsi trilogy. I'm pretty excited for it mostly because I've heard the rest the other two books are better than Assassin's Apprentice and it's not that I didn't like Assassin's Apprentice. I did like Assassin's Apprentice. I ended up giving it four stars. That's a decent rating for a book. I just didn't like it as much as the Life of Traders trilogy which all of the books so far in that trilogy are five stars and that's Robin Hobb's second tr trilogy in the realm of the elderlings. So I'm hoping that I end up liking these two books better than the first one and there's a good chance that I will but I'm really more excited to finally get to the Tawny Man trilogy in May and then the rest of the realm of the elderlings will come after that because I'm really loving her later books so I'm hoping that I can read these both of these in April so that I can get to the rest of them. On kind of a similar note I also really hope to get to The Blinding Knife 
Life by Brent Weeks. In case you were wondering, I'm in the middle of a ton of different series, like a lot of them. I should probably do a video on how many different series I'm currently in the middle of, but I'm also currently in the middle of the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. This is the second novel in the Lightbringer series. Last year in the month of December, I read the first novel, The Black Prism, and I really, really liked it. Like I ended up giving it four stars, but it also only took me three days to read it. Mind you, these are pretty big books. Like they're not small and they're adult high fantasy. They're not YA books, which I've been known to finish a YA book in a day. Adult high fantasy though usually takes me a little bit longer than that. And I read that book in three days. So obviously I really enjoyed it and I really, really wanted to get to the next book in the series, but I just never got to it. And I really, really want to continue on with the series because the fifth book I think in the series is coming out this year. So I'm pretty far behind in this series and I've heard that it's really good. So I'm definitely excited for this one. So I might've mentioned that I'm in the middle of a lot of series, but I'm going to be in the middle of another one because I've decided to start another series because I'm, I really do want to read this one also. And that is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. So I've tried to start this book several times on audio. And every time I pick up the audiobook, I'm like, I want the physical book. So then I put down the audiobook and then I never buy the physical book. So then I put, pick up the audiobook again because I really want to read this book. And then I'm like, wait, I want the physical book. So then I put it down again. So I just never got around to it because I didn't have the book. So what did I do? I bought the book. Yeah, I bought the book yesterday. Yeah, I'm gonna go on a book buying ban. I have a problem. I need to read this book. Like, I really, really wanted to read this one. So that's why I bought it. And I did buy a paperback. Like, at least I didn't go out, out and buy the hardcover too. So, like, give me props for that, please. This one's about assassins, I believe. I started it. I don't remember that much about it. I think it's written in, like, sort of, like, a funny voice or something like that. It's a really hyped book. Like, so many people love this book, especially on BookTube. And that's kind of why I didn't buy it previously because I was kind of like, it's so hyped. It must be horrible. Like that's not the way you should talk about books. But part of it, I think, is because it's hyped. I'm thinking that my expectations of it will be so high that it won't meet those expectations. And so then I just never read the books. So I'm letting myself believe that hyped books can be good too. But but at the same time, I'm trying not to get my expectations too high. So I'm excited to read this one. Really, really excited to read this one. I'm trying to keep my expectations low just in case I don't like it. But I'm hoping that I will end up liking it because everyone else seems to like it. And I want to get to this one. And hopefully I can get to it in April. So the next book that I'm really excited to get to is also a book that I recently bought and that is The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Patrick Ness is an author that I really really want to get more into. I've read A Monster Calls last year. Really really love The Monster Calls. I think he has a really interesting way of portraying the stories that he's trying to tell and in The Knife of Letter Never Letting Go it's a story in which like everyone can hear each other's thoughts but our main character is illiterate so all of the thoughts that he hears are spelled out phonetically and not like how it's actually supposed to be spelled. So that is just like an interesting way and the idea that there's an entire town of people that can hear each other's thoughts. It's just intriguing. I want to see how that goes. This could either be like completely brilliant and genius or it can come off really dull. So I don't know which way it's gonna go but so far I'm really intrigued by the idea and I've heard really great things about it by people that I really trust so I'm hoping that I'm gonna end up liking it. The next book that I'm excited to get to is Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schulte. This was in the Alcrate for March and the February Alcrate actually turned out really well for me because it was Crown of Feathers right up there and I ended up really really liking Crown of Feathers. I'm also kind of on a YA high fantasy kick right now. If you watch my reading vlog, you'll find out why. It's the type of book that I should like. Based off of just what I've heard about it, it's the type of book that I should like. I don't know if I will like it because YA high fantasy is definitely very hit or miss for me, but I'm hoping that I'll end up liking this one. I haven't heard anything bad about it yet, so I'm hoping that I'm gonna end up liking it. And I'm probably gonna get to this one really soon because I am on a YA high fantasy kick, so I'm probably gonna get to this one really soon. So the last book that I'm really, really excited to get to, like really, really excited probably more than most of the other books that I mentioned even though this is like the least fantasy of them all it's by an author who doesn't write a whole lot of fantasy and it's like the one like magical realism book that he has but I'm super super excited to get to it and that is my grandmother asked me to tell you I'm sorry by Frederick Bachman Frederick Bachman is one of my new favorite authors I read Bear Town and Us Against You this year and every time I mention that people have been asked me whether I've read my grandmother asked me to tell you I'm sorry because they think I'll really like this one because of the magical realism aspects to it so I'm so 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 excited to get to this one because I really do think that I'll end up liking it so I'm so so excited about it it's about a seven-year-old girl whose grandmother dies and she kind of is able to communicate with her grandmother in her dreams which is really really interesting concept and it's Frederick Bachman so like I completely trust the concept in his hands and I think it's gonna be amazing and I'm super excited for it so that was a lot of books it's so many books and there's like no way that I'm gonna get to all of them but at the same time I'm super super excited to get to them because I really really want to 
read these books. If you've read any of these books, let me know down in the comments below on which ones I should prioritize because I'm so excited for all of them. It's really hard to prioritize any of them right now. I hope you guys really enjoyed watching. I'm actually changing my posting schedule to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only three times a week. So I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.